Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nina and I'm currently a third year student at Onderspoort campus here in South Africa studying vet science. And oh, today is actually a really important video, but before we get into that, I just quickly have to give a quick update because a lot has happened since I've last done a video. So I had my first week of third year, which is amazing. I was actually going to do a whole, you know, week in the life, vlogging the whole thing, showing you guys, you know, first week in third year. And I was doing that and it was all going well. And, um, and then unfortunately on the Wednesday, our dog got really, really sick. Um, and we took it to the vet a bunch of times and every time it seemed to just get worse, you know, irregardless of the medication or anything. So unfortunately by the end of the week, we had to put her down because yeah, basically she was a walking tumor. But anyway, um, we also had our first VPL block, which is Veterinary Professional Life. So this week we did community engagement. I'm actually busy with my assignment right now, but I am obviously procrastinating. Um, and we had our first day back on campus for our first Hyflex lectures, which was, it was okay. I am, uh, I was just reminded how thankful I am for online learning. <laughs> I am definitely more of an online person. I definitely prefer that over in-person classes. Obviously that's a different story when it comes to practicals. You sort of need someone to help you with those. But yeah, so went back to campus. I was going to do a video on that and then I was ridiculously late and honestly not much happened. But I did take a couple of clips that I will try to include in the video. So let's get into today's video. Today's video is extremely important and that is what to do if you do not get into vet school on your first try um, or when you get out of high school. So for most people the first route that they take is that they decide in high school, um, this is also the route that I took, was that I decided in high school or well before I wanted to be a vet, I did my shadowing, I applied in grade 11, I got admitted in matric and then I went first year vet school. So that is sort of the most straightforward, plain and simple route that you can take. But for majority, and I mean like 90% of the applications, this does not happen. Only about 10% of applications are admitted, if I'm doing my math correctly. But they lost num the last numbers I heard, they get about 2,000 applications every year. And there are only 200 places that can be filled. So, yeah. A lot of people do not get in on the first try. Honestly, when people ask me how I got in, I'm like, oh yeah, I got in from high school. And they're like, what? How? It's like, you, you know, it's, the, it's pretty much the most unheard of thing to get in directly from high school. So, with that being said, if you do not get in directly from high school, do not panic, stress, worry. You do not deserve to go to vet school. Your entire life is over. Your dream has been smashed to pieces none of that is true okay it just means that you have to go on to the next step to try and get in so how it works is when you apply the first time you give um they ask you for like your first choice what you would like to study then obviously you say veterinary science and then they ask you for a second choice i don't think they let you apply if you don't put in a second choice i'm not sure they might i don't know but anyway they ask you to put in a second choice and then what you do if you apply for vet school, always, 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 you put in a BSc degree. Because what happens that is that if you study the BSc degree, you can reapply directly from there and simply continue in vet school second year without having to study any extra if you get in from applying from BSc in your first year. So there are three courses that you can apply to. It is BSc Zoology, Biological Sciences, and a bachelor's in science degree in agriculture, no, a bachelor's in science for agriculture in animal sciences or something like that. But it's BSc Agric in animal sciences. I will also have a video of the university linked below where you guys can go and see, you know, the university basically presenting the section where they tell you what you can put as your second choice and how all of that works. 
but yeah so i talked to a couple of my friends who went this route where they didn't get in on the first try or they didn't even apply when they were in high school they simply applied for a bsc degree and then from the bsc degree they reapplied or applied for the first time for vet school so how it works is that you start to study bsc and it is basically exactly the same as studying vet you have almost exactly the same modules the only difference is that in first semester you have to take an extra module of mtl so that is medical terminology you need that module to be able to continue with second year of vet school so if you are thinking of applying for vet school you have to take that as an additional module then my friend also said that you have WTW is applied calculus. You have that in first semester where the vet students have it in second semester. Chemistry is also a one semester subject for vet students. We have it in first semester, but then for BSc, it is a year long module. So you have it spread over two semesters, but it is the exact same content. You guys just have to suffer with it for longer. <laughs> Then also in the second semester, you have MBY and BOT, which is botany and I think microbiology or something like that. I'm sorry, guys, I didn't have these modules and my friend couldn't remember what the actual names are. She could just remember like, the abbreviations for them. So yeah, but it's MBY and BOT. So you have those without needing them to get into vet school, but that is the only differences between studying VET and studying BSc in the first year. We literally, we go to the same classes, we have the same lectures, everything is the same. There are just a couple of different modules. Then you reapply the same way that everyone does. You go online, you fill out the application. I cannot remember exactly what the application form looks like, guys, to be honest. Neither can any of my friends. But if I'm correct, there's like a point where they say, you know, are you a high school student at the moment? Are you a student? Are you working? Are you you know, just in limbo or whatever, they ask you that and then you will probably say you are a student, you are studying BSc in this. And then what happens is that you still have to have the basic things from a trick to be able to be admitted. Like they say that you have to have a minimum of this and this and this, you know, so a minimum of I think it is 60% of, uh, on average. So you still have to have those things from a trick, but then instead of looking at your grade 11 and your matric marks, like they do if you apply when you're in high school, they look at your first semester and second semester marks of your BSc degree. So you apply with your first semester marks and then you get admitted based on those, well, conditionally admitted. And then they just basically make sure that you don't drop like a lot with your second semester. So they just try to see that you can keep your marks more or less where they are. And then if you do, you get your final admittance. And the next year you simply go on to study the second year of vet, uh, of vet science and you go to Unterstburt and you get to see the horses and the sheepies and the pigs and all of that. So that's fantastic. <laughs> now, a very important thing, and this is a mistake that I made. Luckily, I did not suffer because of it, but there was, but there was a very big chance that I would have. So when you apply for vet science and you put your second choice as BSc, with BSc, they, as far as I know, they basically admit on a first come first serve basis. So they check that you meet the minimum requirements and then, you know, if if there is still a spot open, you get in. So I got admitted for zoology, was, which was my second choice, within, I think, a few weeks or a couple of months um, from when I applied. And then I waited until I think it was August. Yeah, I think it was August of my matric year when I heard that I was admitted for vet school. And then a while after that, I got an email because when you, you know, with your application status and stuff, there's like a little block where if you get admitted, you have to say whether you accept or reject your admittance. So whether you actually want to study that course that you have been admitted for. And for zoology, I just left it because if I do get in, then I don't want to study it. But if I don't get in, then I definitely do want to. So I just left it and then I got admitted for vet, immediately said accept and then a while after that, like a few days or a few weeks, I got an email being like, okay, well, you have already accepted one of your courses, but you haven't given an answer for your other course. So will you please accept or reject your zoology admittance so that we can give that place to someone else if you are not going to use it? And I was like, oh, okay, I reject it because I'm, I'm going to study vet. Huh. So that was stupid. Luckily, I did not have to suffer because of it. But what happens is that if your matric marks drop, then you lose your place. And if you lose your place and you don't have that plan B, then you are stuck. Then you have nothing that you are going to study at University of Pretoria the next year or most likely any university because all of the applications will have been closed at that point. 
So this is also a warning and it's really important. They told us that your TPT points have to drop more than two. They said that it has to be more than two TPTs that you drop, you know, to lose your place at the university for vet science. And I was like, okay, great. I just won't do that. That's fine. But when I got to university and I met a few people who were admitted conditionally for vet, and then they dropped two TPTs, not more than two, just two, and then they were rejected from the program. And then they had to go and study BSc. So make sure that you do not accept or reject that BSc thing until you know for sure whether you are accepted or rejected for vet school. Wait for the final answer. Don't just, you know, sit around and it'll be fine. Of course I'll get in. Because also one of my friends, I think they only dropped one. But I think it was for an important subject. I'm not 100% sure what the full story is there. So, but according to him, he only dropped one and he lost his place. So, yeah, basically, do not take that chance. It is really not worth it because... I actually dropped one TPT. My accounting went down from an 80 to a 79. That was literally, those were the numbers. I went down from an 80 to a 79 and I lost a TPT. So if that had happened with an important module, which it nearly did, or subject, still subject in school, um, then I would have lost my place. So for example, for math, I actually went down with my final exam from a 90 average to exactly 80. I finished with 80% for math. I was 1% away from, from losing a TPT point for math, which is one of the most important modules for getting your admittance into vet school. So if I had lost that TPT, I'm convinced that I would have lost my place and that I had already rejected the BSc and I would have been basically doing nothing for a year. So yeah, do not make that mistake. Don't do that. I feel like, you know, the university is really pressuring you to make a decision, but don't make that decision unless you absolutely are sure that you are in or out of vet school. And then guys, on a bit of a less, you know, factual planning, you know, all the technical stuffies kind of note, if you do not get into vet school on the first try, it is really not a crisis, it's not a problem, and it does not say anything about your capabilities as a human or a student or a vet. You know, of all the students that I'm studying with at the moment, there are so many of them who got in from BSc Either they studied BSc for one year or two years or three years and they got in and they are not bad students. They are not struggling with the work, well, any more than the rest of us are. You know, most of them are even doing better than I am. You know, it does not mean that you are a bad student if you do not get into VET on the first or second or third try. That does not say anything about you. And to be honest, I don't know who of the students in my year got in from BSc and who got in from high school. Between my friends, obviously I know, but you don't walk around and be like, oh, that's a BSc student. You know, they're not supposed to be here. You're a group, you're a community, you're all on the same page, you're all fighting for the same thing, and that is to help animals. It is to make a difference. Nobody cares if you got in on your first or 50th try. It is that you are there now and that you are there now to make a difference. Also an important tip to just remember, if you did not get in on the first try, and you study your year of BSc, or maybe you take a gap year, or whatever you do, make sure that you continue with your shadowing. Even when you get in and you're studying, continue with your shadowing. Because either it is skills that you have to learn that you will be using one day, or it is something that will help you to get admitted. You know, it's not just academics, it's not just getting the good marks and studying hard and getting 90s on all of your tests. Okay, it is also about the animal experience that you get. So if you have this year to improve on what you did last year, improve on everything. Don't just drop everything because there is just no way that you'll get in and why even try, you know, which is another thing that I want to mention. And to be honest, this is one of the most frustrating things to me. And if you are going through this or if you have gone through it, I completely understand where it's coming from. But it's a thing of people who say, oh, I'm not going to apply because, you know, what if I don't get in? Well, then, then so what? Then, then you didn't get in. You don't lose anything by applying and you don't lose anything by not getting in. The only thing that can change by applying is that you gain. You gain access to one of the most incredible degrees that exists, in my opinion. Obviously, you know, it's my opinion, but I feel like I'm allowed to have that opinion. <laughs> so don't feel like 
you shouldn't try because there's a chance that you would fail. If you don't apply for vet school, you don't even have the chance of getting in. So take that chance. Basically just don't give up on vet school because it's difficult. It is always going to be difficult. Applying is difficult. Getting admitted is difficult. Moving away from your province or your country or your hometown or anything to go and study at a different university is difficult. Every course and test and quiz that you will be doing will be difficult, but it will be so worth it in the end. So don't let a setback be something that stops the entire process. Anyway, guys, step away from all the deep and emotional and motivational things, which I don't even know if any of it made sense. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that this video can help some people. I know that it is really a big blow if you do not get into vet school. It is really not a nice thing to have to see and to have to deal with, but it is not over. So here is your plan B. SC, you know, you know, BSC, plan B, SC, ha, ha, anyone get the joke? Please tell me you guys got the joke. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped some of you and I hope that it'll make a difference for some of the students who are still trying to get in. So I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.